Hello, welcome to another drive-in double feature. I'm Ryan. I'm Nathan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies a week every Tuesday and Thursday. But before I get into anything at all, we have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash drive-in double feature podcast. Some really uh, grotesque stuff over there. Just like, I can't, it's unimaginable what we talk about over there. Yeah. Unimaginably good time. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? You'll never be able to experience it here. We don't go oh, that gross here. Such a good time. I want to vomit. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but good stuff over there for only $5 a month over at Patreon. But do not worry. It does not affect at all for our very mild content over here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very vanilla over here. Uh, yeah, definitely. Much I like vanilla. That's my favorite flavor of ice cream. Me too, Ryan. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're going to be talking about 1995's Theodore Rex, directed by Jonathan R. Butel. And uh, this is a uh, straight-to-video movie starring Whoopi Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, yeah, Whoopi, Whoopi for T-Rex uh, week? Huh? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I say when I see a T-Rex. I say Whoopi. <laughs> whoopsie <laughs> or are you yeah. saying whoopsie yeah yeah that's what i'm gonna be saying at the end of this episode <laughs> but uh, but uh i do want to kind of this this movie has a much more interesting story of the behind the scenes than what actually is yes. on screen yeah so uh just to kind of give you some context i mean Whoopi Goldberg, you know, she had her big breakout role with the movie The Color Purple in 1985. And what? 1985? She, huh. Isn't that like, uh, is it 1985? Oh, no. I was trying to make a joke that the, the new one was was the only oh. one. I thought that came out this year. <laughs> oh, yeah. She just had her big breakout. <laughs> no. But no, you're, you're right. You're right. But, uh, but no, she, uh, she had her big breakout role, got nominated for an Oscar, did a couple of other like mid-tier comedies that didn't really catch on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she did Ghost, won an Oscar. But then like her big monster hit was actually the movie Sister Act. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that uh, that seemed like a winning combination. It finally made her a bankable star where people were actually like, let's give her mm-hmm. big budgeted movies. Um and on the other side of the globe, there was an Italian investor named St- Stefano Ferrari. Oh, who, whoa. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he invested in the new Adam Driver movie. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he convinced Adam Driver to be in it. Suit him. But, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he was actually the son of a pharmaceutical mogul over in Italy at the time. Mm-hmm. And his father gave him a bunch of money. So he has $14 million. So what do you do? Obviously, you finance a movie. And he found this script for Theodore Rex. And he's just like, brilliant. Bravo. (laughs) And and, uh, originally, this movie was going to have... um, It was supposed to be written for a white male. I believe Kurt Russell was the intended target at first. Oh, wow. And they, uh, they were really courting that. But... Like I said, once Sister Act came out and they saw Whoopi Goldberg as a big star at the time, they're like, okay, well, let's just take the more zanier aspects of this script and let's turn it into a feature film. And that's where the Richard Abersom uh, walks into the story. And he is another producer on this film. Okay. And I guess he had connections to Whoopi Goldberg because he was actually able to set up a meeting with Whoopi Goldberg. Mm-hmm. And she seemed pretty on board with the whole thing. She said, sign me up. Theodore Rex sounds like a great time. <laughs> and, <laughs> she and, just made a huge mistake. <laughs> well, yeah. And she wouldn't know how big of a mistake she had made because um, when they started getting close to filming time, you know, they call her up and uh, they say, hey, are you still interested in being in this Theodore Rex movie? She's like, yes, definitely, 100% on board with doing this. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets close to uh, 
uh, pre-production, they uh, call her and she kind of ghosts them like her movie ghost. Oh, whoa. She took uh, keys from her movie. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she did not return a lot of their calls was not, uh, did not seem to have any interest. Cause I guess, you know, as the years went on, like kind of was realizing, Hey, maybe this is not a good idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe this, this is, is not, bad. <laughs> maybe this is a bad idea. Cause, uh, she ended up at that point, I think she did Sister Act and then Sister Act 2. Oh, wow. And Both of those had been out already? Yeah, Sister Act 2 was the next year. So okay, it was, gotcha. it was uh, you know, she was kind of like, okay, like I'm, movies are starting looking good here. So maybe this is not a very good idea to, to do this <laughs> yeah. Theodore Rex movie that that's maybe won't make me as this big serious time actor. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, they were kind of like, Hey, you agreed to be in this movie, so now we're gonna sue you for to be in this movie. And you know that's not that is not a good thing when you have to be oh. sued. Whenever your main star, your lead star, is in a lawsuit and has to be in the movie because of a lawsuit, you I can't imagine that being a good idea. I mean, I under I mean, I guess I can kind of see from their point of view where I mean, it's like like, yeah, you you did agree to be in this movie and we're expecting you to be in it, but I don't know. I mean, I guess I can't really say much because I don't, you know, I didn't have any skin in the game or any money involved. But at that point, it's like they really don't want to be in it. I would much rather hire somebody that would be on board with this idea. Exactly. That That's the thing. It's like, I get it. She broke the agreement, but also like you're going to get somebody who really doesn't care about the movie that they're in. And then that's just a recipe to make this movie even worse. But maybe they knew they had a stinker at this point and they were like, well, we have to get Whoopi in this. Otherwise, I don't know what we're going to get. Well, they didn't know they had a stinker until much later. After really? The they, yeah. they thought they were making genius here? Yeah. Well, yeah. So they, they were expecting this to be a big hit. I mean, because if you could see, I mean... Like the the puppetry in this movie, I will say, I mean, it's it's about on par with like that show Dinosaurs, like that no, sitcom. Yeah. I think so the, I'm, I think it has had a lot of work put into it to have that big of a puppet work for the movie. And there's multiple different dinosaurs in the movie. And you know, that was like a popular show, I would say. I, yeah. I would think. And then uh, you know, you figure you got Whoopi Goldberg, one of the biggest comedy stars of the early nineties to be mm -hmm. in it. It's like uh, how could this fail? And you know, boy, were they wrong. But you know, mm -hmm. like I said, they they sued Whoopi Goldberg, who then countersued them, saying, you know, there I never agreed to be in this movie. Oh, <laughs> but but then uh, apparently, uh, what like that phone conversation I mentioned that she had was recorded. The, yeah, well, uh, so unknowingly, his answering machine picked up like mm -hmm. when she called, and so. You know, like back in the 90s, well, I remember like, you know, sometimes if you picked up while somebody was talking on the answering machine, it would record your cold conversation. Okay. And that's that's what happened. So that was actually submitted as evidence that, yes, she did agree to be in this movie. Oh, my and, God. And uh, as you can imagine, she was not pleased about that. Her lawyers tried to get that thrown out and say this was an illegally recorded conversation. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was not. It was it was admitted as evidence. So it uh, she was beholden to be in this movie. But uh, she did get a higher paycheck because she was originally going to be in this movie for five million dollars. Mm -hmm. But she got an additional two million, so she got a cool <laughs> seven million for being in this movie. So no, I don't want to be paid millions of dollars for a movie. Stop. <laughs> so this movie had a budget of thirty-five million dollars. So if you think about it, five percent of that went into Whoopi Goldberg's yeah. pocket. <laughs> ah. Man, I I know I read that thirty-five million, and you know honestly. We'll we'll get into it, but you can see it on the screen. You can see that this is a big budget movie with a lot of sets and a lot of special effects. There's a lot of work going into this one. Oh yeah, well I mean at the time I think it was either on par or like the second highest budgeted 
straight to video movie behind like one of the Jean Claude Van Damme movies, wow. which was also straight to video. Um, well, was it, I mean, a question for you if you didn't, and if, I don't know if you know this, was it meant to be straight to video, like, or was it meant to have no? A okay, so uh, at the uh, I was gonna say this for the end, but I'll save it for now, I'll say it now, but yeah, okay. it was a. This movie has a very bad reputation. I will say that this movie is not yes. highly regarded as a very low score um, was critically panned. And so when they actually did eventually do test screenings for this movie, mm -hmm. uh, it had very, very negative reviews. And this mm -hmm. movie did have a theatrical release. There are trailers for this movie, like saying, you know, that, you know, this is going to be an upcoming movie and everything. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, once they actually had the test screenings, it was very negative. So they said, all right, let's just do this as a straight to video movie. And <laughs> that's that's where they ended up landing. And I got to say this movie, one very impressive thing about this movie is how it affected so many people's career. Really? And this for this movie. Yes. Well, you got to so, think. Oh, uh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you got you go ahead. Well, I was going to say is the voice of. um. Theodore is the guy from Father of the Bride, right? Um, George Newbern. Yeah. Did it ruin his career because he doesn't do anything? No, I mean he he kind of. I mean he he doesn't do a whole lot, but yeah, you know he he kind of has like a very unnoteworthy career. Other besides yeah. being like the the husband or the fiance and Father of the Bride. <laughs> yeah, but, that's like it. <laughs> and Theodore Rex. And Theodore Rex. Yeah, but. Mm -hmm. Um, you got to think though. So, uh, Stefano Ferrari, like he wanted to be in the movie business. This ended up killing his entire movie career because this movie ended up being such a bomb. And yes, yeah. Also, too, uh, he ended up uh, his father ends up dying after this movie is over, and mm -hmm. and he ends up owing all these other debtors uh, at least a million dollars. So, oh my god, it leaves him. <laughs> Leaves him penniless and unhappy. Uh, <laughs> Richard Ab Abrasom, um was the producer that pretty much forced Whoopi Goldberg to be in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, he also does like two other like very mid tier movies like years after this, like mm -hmm. many, many years. So he ends his career pretty much. Okay. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, like I said, she was a huge star, but I mean, if you look after this, like, I don't. She doesn't have like no Whoopi Goldberg as a star, like top grossing earner. No. After this, yeah, she. I guess that makes sense. I can't even really think of any that she would be the, like the star of. Well, I mean, like she. I mean, that's kind of like what happened. Like you know, she ended up doing like other like really bad comedy movies in the in the 90s where it's like the advocate eddie bogus it's just like all these movies that nobody mm -hmm. ever saw <laughs> were not very good yeah um so i mean there's not really any other starring movies where she can really like put her name on after this and then um mm -hmm. the uh, director jonathan butel this is his last movie he had such a bad time directing this movie that he retired from the movie <laughs> yeah. industry uh, he quit the movie <laughs> business and so so this movie is quite literally the grim reaper of so many movie <laughs> careers <laughs> but it's so weird though because mm -hmm. um uh uh, you know, maybe it's just because we are doing a podcast where we run into some like garbage movies. This movie's not good. This movie's not good. But it's definitely not the worst movie I've seen. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, it's just for. I mean, the way it sounds, where it's like ridiculous, where it's like Whoopi Goldberg and a dinosaur teaming up. You think like this has got to be nuts. It's really not. It's pretty. It, it's kind it, of boring I, it's uninteresting <laughs> there was a point where i was like oh i'm tired i'm so tired of which is so weird it's a whoopi Bo goldberg t-rex cop comedy it should be way more interesting well i mean the problem with this movie a lot of times is just like none of the characters have that, that much personality to them i mean like yeah. I, I mean like whoopi goldberg i mean she's like a no-nonsense cop that's in mm -hmm. this movie. So, I mean, that's kind of like her role. She's trying to play a hard ass, but 
you can just hear by like her line delivery. She just could not give any less of a shit in this movie. Just she like she does not care. <laughs> and that's that's a lot of people say, you know, she was a real terror to work on in the set. And I mean, like she got she she legally had to be in the movie. She legally had to be in there. She was not very, very cooperative a lot of times. And anytime she saw these producers that sued her, you know, she had to have them thrown from the set. She was muttering curse words under her breath every time she saw them. And it just yeah. like, was not was not having a good time. I mean, they did say like towards the end of recording this movie, uh like filming the movie that she was she kind of started warming up a little bit and mm-hmm. like and apparently she had a good uh chemistry with the suit performer that did t- teddy rex oh that's good so that's good. so they seem to have a really good rapport but um i don't even know if she met the guy that did the voice acting because it's <laughs> yeah. very obvious like he it, his voice is added in post-production yeah it was probably an easy job for him yeah so uh I, but yeah, like I said, it's a very, very mid mild movie where, you know, you're kind of expecting a lot of this crazy stuff, but it's just like, like even like the T-Rex, you're thinking maybe like, oh, it's going to be like a wacky T-Rex or something or like a mm-hmm. wisecracking T-Rex. And it's, it's really not. He's like, he's really got like a super average personality. Yeah, that's kind of what it feels like. It's like, oh, he's just like an average Joe. Uh, and it's like they let him be a detective. It's like, kind of like, oh, he's kind of dumb, but eh, I guess we can let him be a detective. I mean, it's a publicity stunt, but still. He also mutters a lot. Um, so usually I, I we're different on this. I don't really like subtitles in movies, but I had to have subtitles on this one because I could not understand the T-Rex. He, he was either too quiet or he'd mutter. It, it was hard to understand. Well, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of scenes where it's very clear that he's trying to, I guess he's just like riffing or like, yeah. like just be funny, like do something. And he's yeah. just, and because they don't film the T-Rex a lot of times when he's talking. So it's like, mm-hmm. he can just like say whatever mm-hmm. and with, without, without any uh, like care. So like, like there's a scene where uh, we're jumping way, way ahead where he takes like a lady dinosaur like to his apartment and he's <laughs> yes. like, hey, you want to see my car collection? See right here. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Like just like just, just like, <laughs> like, 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 a, like, a, like a child. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then that 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 uh, Molly Rex there is played by Carol Kane. I don't remember the returning actress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, did you, I, I, so there's like a guy, there's like a henchman in this movie that's like a real, like quite literally like a toady and like actor. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, like yeah. before I looked at like the cast and I was like, he looks so familiar. Who is I, that? I know and, who it was. <laughs> and then I saw the name and I'm like, oh, wow. That's um, Bud Court from uh, Harold and Maude. Yeah, Bud Court is so wild. I, I haven't seen a lot of movies between Harold and Maude, but I think of him in Life Aquatic where he's just like, he looks like a completely different man. <laughs> in this movie, he looks completely different. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just Harold and Mon was like 20 years before this, but still, mm-hmm. it's just like, that's the same guy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, um, anyway, jumping into the movie, um, it's, uh, like I said, it's Whoopi Goldberg plays like uh, a badass cop, you know, plays by her own. Up plays by her own rules and all that. And uh, Theodore Rex is like, that's like a thick, big thing. Like dinosaurs are integrated into this world of people. Mm -hmm. And Theodore Rex is a cop, but he's more kind of like, they put him in public relations as a cop, just as a, like a diversity hire kind of like, yeah. Like, Oh, we have, we have a T-Rex on the team. Um, Yeah. He's like a public relations person. I think that's like, just like a nothing job. Um, the world in this reminds me a lot of like Mario Brothers, kind of that movie, yeah. except, not, except not as fun, of course. Um, no, I mean, I did, I will say like some of the sets and designs of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's probably like the best. Like if I'm going to give this movie a compliment, mm-hmm. like some of the production and sets, like that's probably like the best looking parts yeah. of this movie. But like, um, like when they go to that nightclub later in the movie. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. And uh, 
but uh, I mean, just like there's not a whole lot of good things for me to say about it. Cause I mean, the plot of this movie is they, they stumble upon a doctor and he's wanting to create the second ice age. And he wants to basically create like a Noah's Ark of people and animals that he mm-hmm. wants that he deems worthy and two people that escape uh, to tell the world about this plan, he ends up murdering him. And one of them is a dinosaur. And that's a big deal because they don't ever see a murder dinosaur. Yeah, so. a, di- a dino side. As dino side. Yes. yes. Uh, and I guess all dinosaurs share feelings. So they know when another one dies. Yeah. That's um, <laughs> because oh, and- he, he has a very, trippy dream sequence like as yes. it's so weird like how yeah, that, and that's that how like the is. movie opens it's a very like super avant-garde like yes op- like dream like you'd see like in a european film almost but <laughs> yeah but i mean uh, so that's like when you watch that so i remember watching this movie as a kid on vhs i can't and, believe you watched this as a kid <laughs> and well i mean you know like i like the, the cover i like what be- I liked Whoopi Goldberg. I liked the show Dinosaurs. I mean, like, what, again, what could go wrong? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You were suckered into it like a bunch of other kids. Well, how did you well, feel yeah. about it when you were a kid? Well, I only watched it the one time. So I was pretty bored by it. I mean, because when I was a kid, I could watch a movie like a bunch of times, you yeah. know, like Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, Happy Gilmore, like, mm-hmm. probably seen those movies like 20, 30 times yes. in my life. It's just like, an insane amount and but like so when you only watch a movie like one time or something it's like it's got to be something pretty bad for me and yeah yeah i get that but i i just remember being really bored by the plot because i mean like even when they go and do stuff it's like not very interesting at all no, it's no just, it it's like not really interesting detective work they kind of just go around ask people questions <laughs> And the the, re- the revelations aren't good. It's just, uh, it's not even a mystery because we know that um, the bad guy played by Armin Mueller uh, Stahl uh, is the bad guy the whole time, right? The dinosaur creator. So there's not even like a mystery there. Right, yeah, because I mean, it's it says it in the opening too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Dr. Kane wants to create it and they see, oh, there's Dr. Kane. Like, you know, everyone loves yeah. him. And Which is such a bad way to open your cop detective movie. Okay, here's the mystery. Who Here's who's doing it. Let's watch the movie now. Instead of like the movie organically telling you these plot points. Yeah, but, you know, and it's it's trying really hard to be a comedy, but the comedy is not landing. Mm-hmm. in the slightest for me no it's not and... a funny movie there is one di- i think i laughed one time and it's a really off bit of Whoopi goldberg in the nightclub and she's sitting next to another dinosaur in the bar and the dinosaur has like giant teeth <laughs> um and she's just like oh you're not getting any tonight i think it just made me laugh because Whoopi goldberg is smiling and laughing in this scene and i was like oh she actually yeah. thinks this bit is funny <laughs> she's actually having a good time that's like the only time she has like any personality in yeah, this movie. She's like laughing. She cracked a joke and I was like, oh, I mean, that's probably why it stuck with me because it looked like yeah. she cared. It's like the one time in this movie where she's just not like acting annoyed at everything. And yeah. Because I, I mean, even in the like the first time when they meet, they're like, okay, here's your new partner, a dinosaur. And then she just says, He's a dinosaur. And she says it. He's a dinosaur. He's a dinosaur. You're a dinosaur. I'm like, yeah. I think they're trying to say this is funny, but I'm like, yeah. this is not well, funny. It's, but she's saying it like the same. I get it. The first time, the, this is just a dumb joke. It wouldn't have been funny in either way, but it'd be like, it's a dinosaur. And she just goes louder and louder, crazier and crazier. But she just plays it. She's just, it's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. You know, it's not, there's nothing really yeah. to it. <laughs> It doesn't ramp up at all. It's just yeah. the same, like, it's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, and there's just a lot of that. Who- Who- Whoopi, I mean, I get why she didn't want to be in this movie. And who's to say, I and mean, this movie probably wouldn't be good even if she was having a good time, but it would have been at least a little better. She doesn't make this movie enjoyable. No, and I mean, like I said, the, the main plot of the movie is them trying to figure out how this guy this one dinosaur died and how who did it and how they can figure out who who did it and like they the the murdered dinosaurs uh Mm -hmm. wife i guess 
or girlfriend, yeah. fiance, uh, S- something. Mo- Molly Rex. Yeah. <laughs> and she like, and of course, you know, oh, two dinosaurs, they fall in love and they, uh, you know, that's like his, the theater Rex's love interest throughout this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like obsessed with her. Um, and I guess fun- um, dinosaurs have quick funerals because they have his funeral like almost immediately. There's some weird dinosaur stuff. Like when they go to the dead body for the autopsy and he's like, uh, he's like, oh, give me a second. And then Theodore's over his body like going, mm, mm. he finds the evidence. <laughs> He finds the evidence in the dinosaur's mouth. I was like, what? What is going on here? <laughs> I thought I was like wondering if that was supposed to be a joke or serious. Like, I don't I, know. I, I don't. I thought he had like ESP powers or something. I, I, what? Because I thought that's what he was doing, too, because, you know, he said earlier that all dinosaurs are connected in some mm-hmm. way. And I thought, you know, he was trying to do like the oh, like, like let me like <laughs> try to let me try to feel this, like how you were yeah. murdered. But yeah, he just like pulls well, because he sees the butterfly, I guess, in his dream, and they pulls yeah. up the butterfly from the mouth, which that's how they figure out mm-hmm. how he was murdered. And they're like, oh, I need a tail print. And he grabs the dinosaur's <laughs> tail and puts it on a copier. Yeah, no no dinosaur has a similar <laughs> tail print. Um, God, what, a, what I, an odd movie. Uh, <laughs> well, the, there's like a scene, too, where they're like, you need to start dressing like a cop more and like he's got like this weird outfit on where he has like a sweater and a jacket on kind of like yeah. at first yeah like and whoopi yellow, Gold- this oh, yellow yeah. sweater are you talking yeah like the first outfit the first the first yeah. outfit yeah but i even think his final outfit's weird because whoopi goldberg's like you look like a cop and he doesn't he's just like wearing like people clothes well because they do like the funny bit where they're like we need to put him in cop clothes. Oh yeah, and he gets to do a, a Mexican uh, sombrero wearing. Uh, he he does the accent. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he does the accent. Dre- mm-hmm. ta- starts talking like a Hawaiian. They got him in the lay. Does a hula dance and yeah, like this is the clearly like the parts like you guys should be laughing right now. And yeah, it's... look, the dinosaur has funny clothes on. <laughs> right, but he he just comes out wearing like a hoodie and a leather jacket and it's just like i'm a cop and wow. he's got like a, he has a ring on too like i know <laughs> yes yeah it's a sweet ring um there's a running gag about with his tail in this movie where he constantly knocks in the things with his tail and i don't think it's ever funny i, I don't no. think it ever makes me laugh but it's always in this going on in this movie it never ever is funny, and it's no. like they they really hammer this joke home. Oh, we forgot mm-hmm. to say too the the uh, captain or the oh yeah lieutenant or whatever is uh, played by Richard Roundtree, aka Shaft. Yeah, <laughs> is yeah. in this movie as well. Yeah, he's you know he he does the best he can. Um, <laughs> he, he... <laughs> Don't aren't we all? Yeah, that's true. That's true, and I, I can I can always appreciate that. Um, but, but again, no, no definable personality no, at all. It, they don't even just, play like the parody of like a, co- a police chief always yelling at them. He's yeah. just kind of mild, right? And I just that's like the the big thing. And they 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 keep having like these really mild personalities, just very just like dry, like not even like played for laughs, just like. I'm like these people have no personality whatsoever and i'm like i don't know how why they thought this was a good idea yeah it, it's wild because i watched this movie as of recording this like maybe if like a few hours ago give me like seven hours right and i am like forgetting so much like there's so much blank space in this movie that was so unimportant or uninteresting that it has already left my brain. <laughs> well, like they they make the joke that you know since he's a, a, a T Rex, that you know oh I'm a recovering carnivore and he's like <laughs> yes and they're like he's like and he he does claim like well maybe I'll just eat one of them and she said I thought you you don't eat me he's like I binge every now and then <laughs> of course. Um... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, he has a specially made car for him. I remember that where they yeah. have a door open for him with his tail goes in the right place. 
Yeah. Uh, um, and then, he, but then it gets, it gets his parts get taken and he has to drive, ride in a garbage truck because I guess the guy that gives out vehicles is a specious in this movie. Um, oh, yeah. They do, they do use that word in this movie. Are you a specious? <laughs> yeah. So they do, <laughs> they call Whoopi Goldberg that. Yeah. Um, they, they do that bit and then they yeah. also do the another bit where they find the the toy maker i think is what they're it was oh, called yeah and, the little uh, guy and yeah <laughs> uh, they they like i said like i really like the puppetry in this movie but then they have like a character like pop out of a bag which is like one of the worst puppets i've seen in a movie <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i I, th- I didn't i thought the joke was that it was so bad but probably not for a 35 million dollar movie um, I guess not. Yeah, but you're, you're right. It, it, and that's such a bizarre scene because they're just like, like, can you tell us how to get to whatever his name is? Oh, well, you forgot the part where Teddy Rex is doing like impressions of people. It's like he does like the Jack Nicholson, like, give me a freaking gun, <laughs> like type of thing. Like, <laughs> Oh, what a funny uh, guy. <laughs> yeah, like doing like different like movie star impressions. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like, the guy, if they're going to, if you get like a guy like, okay, I, we have to have somebody funny, you know, like something like Aladdin. It's like, we got to have someone like Robin yeah, Williams Robin who has Williams. a very, yeah. like a very distinct voice. They're very charismatic. Mm-hmm. They, they're they very animated with the way they talk and they can do mm-hmm. a million impressions. So it's like, if you're going to do that, I mean, I would at least have gotten somebody that's known to be a voice actor or somebody that's, you know, that is very charismatic to where you know they can they feel like i can I, they can carry the weight of this character by their voice mm-hmm. alone but they, they don't newburn. It, george newburn is who they got and it's, you know like you said if you thought the guy you know like the the guy the the fiance from father the black bride was the funniest character he thought he was funnier than steve martin then you know maybe <laughs> maybe you'll like it <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. If you if you really walked out of the father of the bride and said, yeah, the fiance, that was the funniest part of this movie, <laughs> the most yeah. boring plain man in the movie, <laughs> right? And I think yeah, that's that, that's what they're trying to get like in the movie, yeah. like you know he's perfect or whatever. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that, I I completely forgot about like the impressions and everything. It, it, it's just god it's just like yeah and i mean he's even doing a bad job like i said earlier i feel like he's like mumbling like i can't hear whatever he's saying well yeah that's a there it's like he's mumbling a lot like i said he's riffing a lot where mm-hmm. it's clearly they're just like 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 do some really impromptu type of lines you know like mm-hmm. be funny or whatever and it just it's not landing at all and like you said it, it you're it's really hard to decipher what he's saying half the time yeah like because i had to have my tv like up on like full blast almost i feel like to like yeah. hear a lot what he was saying and there's like other really random par- parts in there like he's a pacifist too or they didn't want to use a gun that's right he and, doesn't use a gun and then and out of nowhere in this movie like and they don't even make a big deal about it. like oh Whoopi goldberg's an android and you're like what that's right yeah she's like yeah more human than human yeah that's very offhanded like it just kind of pops up and goes away like an hour into the movie yeah to bring this up yeah. and i'm just like what <laughs> yeah it's like some weird universe building like they are like oh this will come up later in the sequel it'll be more they important don't... in the next one <laughs> like they don't make a big deal about it they don't mm-hmm. say anything that like brings a, attention to it there's like oh yeah i'm an anthropologist you know more yeah. human than human and then i yeah. just move on and then and like then, wait oh, what <laughs> yeah you forgot about the doll maker scene they they decide that oh fart jokes are going to be in the movie now um where he, they're walking well, that's not the in. first time they bring up that's not the first that's time true. they bring up farts either that's true uh but he like he calls it butt trumpet whatever yeah uh, but trumpets and then like he tortures a guy later by sitting on him and farting on him and i could you imagine having the scene filmed like i just was watching that and i was like man people are there was a crew there there were actors there and they knew exactly what was I'm going like, on in this scene <laughs> well yeah like the actor that was being sad on they're like okay you're being farted on so just like <laughs> react like how you'd be farted on <laughs> yeah uh, and it's like and okay then, uh, uh... <laughs> yeah i guess that would work right i i, I would hope 
he was he's not like yeah woo. Yeah. i mean i'd yeah. give up all my secrets if somebody farted on me i yeah a big giant dinosaur <laughs> yeah i but would hold them so they, do, they could but, keep I mean... going <laughs> i don't know sure <laughs> but, I, I, after but i mean like at a certain point like the lat like the, the climax of the movie is honestly like one of the most boring climaxes like from the movie like i was yeah. i was kind of like i was really tuning out at that point where i was just like okay now i'm just kind of waiting for the movie to be over at yep. this point yeah i'm trying and, my best to like go through the ending and i remember parts but as a whole it's just like one of those like climax is that's all action but it's not really fun action it's, an, it's not memorable right like Whoopi goldberg gets shot teddy gets shot and like mm-hmm. but again it's like not played up like as a big deal it's not like she's dead you know she's just mm-hmm. like oh i can't move right now because i'm a robot and i got shot so mm-hmm. and he's just like oh i gotta hold my arm now and yeah <laughs> and they, they stop the world from being frozen and then uh, Teddy is a fledged in, uh, is a commissioned in as a full cop. Yep. Yeah, and, and they full have, detective. They get a cer- there's a ceremony, and he gets to pick yeah. his partner for the rest of his career. And oh, so he picks somebody else that that's at the ceremony that we've never seen before. Yeah, because I'm not he partnering with, I'm not partnering with you. <laughs> I'm not partnering with you again. And he picks somebody else. Yeah, exactly. No, he picks Whoopi Goldberg. And guess what? He quotes Casablanca. He says, it's the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Awful. Oh, well, that's where that line came from. Oh, you thought it came from Theodore Rex? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was on like AFI's number two line of all time. Theodore Rex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. But- no, and then it ends with the title card "See Ya," and I don't know what it is about that that like pisses me off. I hate the, the movie said "See Ya," like it but wasn't a big deal. <laughs> it's like I think it's because it's I think implying there's there could be a sequel if you guys yeah. like it enough. Maybe there'll be a sequel, mm-hmm. and that did not happen. No, it did not. And uh, like I said, I mean after this. <laughs> Very terrible uh, reviews. Uh, mm-hmm. Went straight to video. I remember seeing this all the time at Blockbuster, which is what attracted mm-hmm. me to it. Rented it the one time, and I never rented it again after that. And mm-hmm. I can't say I'll be spending spending any more of my precious life watching this movie again. No, so. this is enough. <laughs> so I think this will be the last time I see it. Uh, would I give this a recommend? Yes. Of course, you got to see this one, right? <laughs> Ryan, no, don't do that to these people. No, it is not. No, don't watch this. It's boring. It's not even a fun bad movie. It's an uninteresting no. bad movie. <laughs> no, and if we've made that before, I mean, like, I, I mean, if it was outrageously bad where it's like you got to see it to believe it, you know, that would yeah. be one thing. But Kind of like Mac and Me, I guess. But I remember that one yeah. kind of boring, too. <laughs> that one was bad but it was like comically bad in some yeah. places so i can at least i can at least appreciate like how like bad it was mm-hmm. um but you know like i said it's one of the worst things you can do is make a boring movie and you know this is mm-hmm. now hey, well let me ask you this question would you uh, you have to watch one would you watch this one or oh <laughs> oh my dog <laughs> Oh, oh, that that's a tough one. I, I, I honestly think I would go with this one. I, I seriously yeah. do. I, I would at least have like puppets to look at. I guess that that was fun. Uh, oh, uh, oh, heavenly dog is just like that. Actually, might be one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Theodore Rex yeah. is kind of like it's. I think it's got a concept there. It's just boring. No, and I. Like I said, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. You know, I've mm-hmm. watched this movie before. Mm-hmm. I'll, you know, quite a few other ones that we've talked about on here before. But mm-hmm. would I ever watch it again? No, I do not recommend it. Not worth checking out. And best leave it at that. Yes, totally agree. But that's going to do it for Theodore Rex. So, Nathan, what are you going to talk about next week? All right, Ryan. So next week on Tuesday, 
we're going to be talking about Death Trap from 1982, and that one is going to be streaming over on Tubi. But what are we going to be covering on Thursday? Well, Nathan, you know, we've talked about the movie Hamburger before, uh, and it's cold outside, so this is a skiing movie, so we're going to be talking about Hot Dog, the movie. Finally, finally. <laughs> Your dad will be very pleased. <laughs> yes, I'll have to ask him about this one. <laughs> and uh, that is free on Tubi right now. Awesome. We got a Tubi double feature coming up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much for joining us for this. Uh, if you want to give us any of your thoughts and opinions, please email us at drive and double feature podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on X at DIDF pod. And once again, check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash driving double feature podcast. But until next time, until next time. Until next time.